Yolo, my fellow human beings, and welcome to episode 121 of The Best Blessed Life. I'm your best host, Kristen, and today's topic is... Hey, don't go bananas and spiral, ya ham. Just eat cake. Before we get started, I want to thank you all for watching. Please continue to watch, comment, share, like, subscribe, ring that bell, and please pass them on to anyone you think they would help. With that being said, here's our list of things to do today, and I swear it keeps growing and growing. Um, so we're going to do our daily affirmations, of course. We're going to talk about change. And in there somewhere while I'm speaking, I'm going to go over a couple more exercises. Just on our own, I'm going to show you things you can do without any weights whatsoever. Again, make sure it's okay with your doctor before performing any, any exercise. I was going to specify which ones, but then I'm like, no, don't do that. And then we're going to do cake and ham. And just as a friendly reminder, every time I make something for you, I make it for you for the very first I make it for the very first time, not just for you. All right. Uh, microphone's off on the side today. For some reason, it didn't charge. So we're all plugged in, and I'm hoping this works out. Okay, so we're starting with the daily affirmations. Actually, let's start with the fact that I got a new do, and I want to thank Emily from Trevolte Salon and all the girls there. They're so great. I have a wonderful time going there, and I always feel great when I leave because she does such a good job. So thanks, Emily. Okay, so we're going to start with the 12th of April, and it is, I am an unstoppable force of nature. The 13th, I am powerful. The 14th, I am living, breathing example of motivation. The 15th, I'm rising above the thoughts that are trying to make me angry or afraid. 16, I am filled with focus. And, and the 17th, wait, that's so weird because the story wasn't avail, unavailable yesterday. Um, the 18th is I can be whatever I want. I have to look back at my because it's disappeared. Let's see if it's in here. You know where it is? It's in my, that's why, um, restore. Let's see if that helps. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. I could have just read it, I suppose. Sorry guys, give me a minute here. And it didn't restore either. God bless America. What is happening? Technology really hates me. My store, and now it's gone from here too. Well, that's sad. Ooh, Canva, I can look at it through Canva. Okay, I am not pushed by my problems. Or I am led by my dreams. That was for the 17th. That's the one that was, uh, eluding me. I gotta remember that I can see them through Canva. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go over our recipes. So today we are making banana ham. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we're going to make a crock pot spiral ham. Yeah, it's going to be a wonder because it does poke out, but she does have instructions for what to do with that. And we're also making a, what's called a potluck banana cake. So I got the crock pot and the potluck. So does that mean I have crock pot luck? I knew that wasn't going to come out right. Crock pock. See? <laughs> I can't bump. Anywho, okay. So for the easy crock pot spiral cut ham, I have to say it that way. Eight pounds spiral cut ham, one cup orange or pineapple juice, I use pineapple, one cup brown sugar, one third cup honey, one tablespoon of Dijon mustard, one tablespoon of balsamic vinegar, and three tablespoons of cornstarch. Pour the juice in the bottom of the crock pot. Combine the brown sugar, honey, mustard, and vinegar in a small bowl. Pour glaze over top of ham using spatula to spread, then put ham in crock pot fast flat side down. If ham sticks out of crock pot, cover the insert with triple layer of foil and tuck it under the edges of the pot insert and put insert back in pot and put lid on top and then give the insert a little push. 
I have a feeling your lid's still gonna look like this though, so. Anywho. And then the potluck banana cake is a half a cup of butter softened, one cup of sugar, two eggs room temperature, one teaspoon of vanilla, two cups of flour that were measured. Um, actually, they were weighed. I keep saying that wrong. They were weighed to make it more accurate. Uh, two teaspoons of baking soda, a half teaspoon of salt, and then one and a half cups bananas, which she equipped says is the equivalent of three medium bananas and then one cup of sour cream which I did not use I'm using Greek yogurt because one I didn't have sour cream and two why not make it at least a little bit healthier okay and then for the frosting it's a third of a cup butter softened um, two and a half cups of powdered sugar which I weighed also and then two teaspoons of granulated coffee which is instant coffee and two to three tablespoons of milk. Preheat to 350, which I already did. Cream butter and sugar until light and fluffy. Add eggs in beating in between. Stir in vanilla. Combine flour, soda, and salt. Add to creamed mix. And alternately mix with bananas and sour cream. You alternate bananas and sour cream is what I'm getting out of it. I could be wrong. Pour into greased 13 by 9, which I still have to grease. Bake 30 to 40 minutes, cool completely on a wire rack, and then for the frosting, beat the butter and sugar until smooth. Dissolve coffee in the milk, add to batter mix, and beat until smooth. Spread over cake, sprinkle with coffee um, granules. Ow, that hurt my elbow. Um, if, that's optional. I don't think I would do that just because I would like it, but I don't know that everybody else would. It could be kind of, you know, polarizing. So here's our ingredients for the ham. And I just went and got an eight ounce can of pineapple juice, which I wanted to show you. And then we've got our three tablespoons of cornstarch. Wait, I didn't read the rest of the directions for the ham. So for the rest, of, I'm in a weird place today. So I apologize. I cover and cook on high for two to three hours or low for four to six hours and then take the ham out and tent with the foil. I'm just gonna use the foil that I've cooked it under. And then you put the juices from the crock pot in a saucepan. Okay, so now we're gonna boil that over medium heat. Combine with the water, combine with water. Oh. We're making a slurry of the cornstarch. I was thinking she was saying she had listed water as an ingredient. No, she just wants me to do a slurry of cornstarch with water. Add to the juices in the saucepan and bring to a simmer for four to five minutes. Not 45, four to five. And brush glaze over and serve. Sorry. I, I can't believe I totally forgot that part. And yet I can't believe I can't believe it. All right, so we're quickly going to go over, actually, it would probably be easier since we're not really doing any, oh, anything with the other part until we start to cook it. I'll just do the things over here. Now, the added thing that I did was I put it in one of those, like, crock pot bags. Now, I'm assuming she wants the, the aluminum foil for the kind of keeping in the heat kind of thing. And I really think this is more for keeping it moist and juicy and then also keeping your crock pot clean. So I am still going to do the foil, but I thought this was a nice way to get the ham nice and close to the um, pineapple juice without like really kind of sticking to the bottom of the crock pot. Because she was worried about that as well. And she mentioned it. I don't remember what she said though. Okay, so then we're supposed to mix the honey, the brown sugar, brown sugar, honey, mustard, and vinegar. So I think we're just going to mix it into the um, brown sugar bowl here. Can't even see what I'm doing, can I? All right. So I'm going to pour this in here. 
I know it comes with a glaze, but I just, I mean, I bought it on sale at Aldi. I got it for like, I don't know, $9 maybe, $8, somewhere in there, for an eight pound, or almost eight pound can. Um, but I wanted to try something different, and I like that this has like some mustard in it, and the balsamic is kind of interesting, so I hope that doesn't backfire on me. Um, I think it's going to cut the sweetness of the brown sugar and the honey, you know, combo we got going on over here. Probably didn't hear a word I said. Okay. I'm trying to get this kind of mixed together so that when I add the other stuff, the brown sugar just doesn't go flying. <gasps> like that. Oh, oh, and, oh, why? This is one of those days, guys. And now I have stickiness everywhere. That is the one thing I really, really hate about honey. Um, even over maple syrup, because maple syrup is obviously sticky. And I know. I know people say spray your um, honey, whatever you're measuring your honey with, because it will come out easier. Do I remember that? No. Why would I do that? Okay. Alright. And now it's going to be hard for me to get the mustard out. Alright. Everybody needs to take a deep breath. I'm just talking to this. Alright. How's everybody doing? <laughs> Alright. In goes the mustard. And this is a spicy. Spicy. Spicy brown, um, also from Aldi. And then also our balsamic vinegar. And I'm going to stir this. I feel like it will get down to the bottom a little easier. Oh boy, am I making a mess, huh? I want to be quick, and I'm taking my sweet time here. All right, you guys don't need to see me mix this. I'm going to put you on pause for a second. That way I can get rid of some of this clutter, and maybe I can take a deep breath. I'll be back. All right, I'm back. All right, so I got it all mixed. I'm just going to pull the bag down like this. Yes, it's going to probably stick to the bag. I don't have a problem with that. It's better than it going all over the crock pot and then, like, you know, being infused in there forever. I feel like I could just pour this over top, you know. She said not to put it into the crock pot until you had um, done this part. But I don't know. I feel like that would be making kind of a mess. But I also, she's right, cannot get to. But here's where the bag probably backfires on me, right? I'm just going to kind of keep moving it around, slapping it on, and letting it do its thing. Because it is sliding down the pan. So, like I said, I feel like I could almost just pour it on here and hope for the best. Because, let's face it, in the bag it's going to get... Covered. And it's going to get recovered with it, you know, when it, we boil, not boil, I keep saying boil, we actually don't boil it, we just simmer it for four to five minutes. So this is what I'm doing. I'm kind of pouring it, trying not to get it already on my bag, which I just did. I don't know what's going on today, but I'll tell you, so far it's been whew, a little rough. We're going to move onward and upward, because that's what we do. I'm trying to get all this out so that I can get that on there. And there we go. 
I would say that I tasted it. it. The mustard is pretty forward, so I'm hoping with the pineapple juice and everything that everything kind of sweetens up. But that just slid down the, the ham very nicely. So I'm going to go on another quick break here so that I can get it all into the crock pot and I can show you what it looks like when it's all wrapped up and purdy. Okay, I'll be back in a minute. All right, I'm back. It's super sealed in. I pushed it. See, the lid's going to fit a lot better, I think. And I did one straight on, and then I did one from either direction going that way, kind of. And then we're going to squeeze this into these, hopefully. It won't be too much of an issue. Ugh. Tucking it under there. in there on low because I got plenty of time. All right, done so. And maybe after a while, I'll, you know, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's pretty safe in there. All right, done. Cake time. Um, and we're going to go over the book that we've been reading, The Truffle Underground. I talked to you about it a little bit last week. It is proceeding nicely. It is a lot of details, I would say, so that's something to consider if you're really interested in learning things. This is the book for you. Now I gotta hope my butter softened. I've had it out for a while, and, oh yeah. Mm. I'm gonna pop it in the microwave for about 10 seconds. Let's make it eight seconds. Because we're going to cream the. I never remember showing the lights on. The butter and. I always check butter and the sugar so fluffy. And we can't do that without a paddle. I am so. I don't know. What's going on today? Discombobulated? It's just one of those days, you know? Of course, I feel like when I, I film every day, so <laughs> every time is one of those days. Can't see if I would have done 10 as it is a little on the runnier side, which I hate to do. See, I don't know if that messes with the texture of my cake. I'm sure it does. But what are you going to do? Okay, and sugar. Here we go. sugar on them. I just set them in there. The condensation. Okay, put the eggs right there. So I'm going to talk a little bit about change and how freaking scary it is and how oftentimes we don't have a choice that change is thrust upon us. And I want to know how you guys deal with that going forward. Um, First, get this creamed up here. Standing arm exercises. See, 
going to try and show you some wall ones. It's like a wall push up, a wall like sit, and I don't know. We could do a version of the sit going with doing an added um, element. Okay, so I creamed it as much as I could. It doesn't get light and fluffy unless I'm supposed to be um, using the whis whiskey attachment. Let's see, changing this to this for a second. I mean, I'm going back to this one, so I'm not really concerned about getting too much of that off. Maybe this will help. I never realized that that was the reason. Okay. I've whipped it enough, I would say, that it's not, I mean, it's not light and fluffy by any means, but it's going to have to do. So now the next thing we add are the, what? Add eggs, beating one another. Hello. 
vanilla. soda and salt and add the cream to mix. Well I really pushed the crap out of my bananas that's for sure. Okay. They're getting cooked. <laughs> my, my bananas are actually getting cooked because they're by the, the oven. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of some of these. That's so funny. Okay. Yeah, I'm putting it back. I know, I don't make any sense. Okay. Jeez. I am just having a time. I don't know what is going on. But bear with me. I'm glad you guys are here with me today. It helps a lot. Okay. So, when do I add... I know I'm supposed to alternate between the banana and the sour cream. Okay, so I think it's supposed to be a, a three-way creaming, I think. I don't know. That's what I'm getting out of it, but I don't know. The way she worded it was very confusing, so I don't know if I'm going to make it worse. <sighs> Bear with me. Alright, so I'm going to add the flour. And we got to turn this down just a little bit. Just to get it started. between the bananas, the Greek yogurt, and I didn't mash mine because they're soft as shit, so it's just going to get mixed. And then I'm going to do like a scoop of the sour cream. So I'm going to probably just be doing it that way. I figured then if I just didn't mash it like I let the machine do it, that the, there would still be some little bits of banana left in there. Oh my god, that banana was powerful. And then I'm going to just do like a scoop of the Greek yogurt. Let's grab in a plop. And that's how I'm going to alternate. I'm going to let you go for a minute while I do that so you don't have to watch every single step of that. And I'll be back. I know, I'm putting you on pause a lot, but just think, I'm saving you so much time. All right, I'm back. I did sneak a little bit of uh, cinnamon in there. I like the flavor. I just love bananas and cinnamon. I always put um, cinnamon in my banana breads and stuff. So, I mean, it was literally maybe a half a teaspoon. It wasn't even worth mentioning probably, but you know. You know me. You can't just leave things alone. So, we're going to spread that out. Turned out to be a really nice batter. Um, I, do say, I do see my chunks of banana in there, so I'm happy. And we just got to press it into the pan here. And 
voila. Maybe I should flatten it a little bit, huh? Try and make it easier to put the frosting on. on the side of the pan where there's no batter. Never a dull moment. I know I say that every week, but it's so true. You can see. I'm not fibbing. All right, good enough. All right. I could be doing that all day. All right. So in she goes. Oh my gosh, I got it everywhere. Word. at 350 for 35 to 40 minutes all right and while that's happening you ask why I always use the timer on my microwave over my oven my oven one is super duper annoying and I can't it literally doesn't give you time in between the time it stops and the next time it goes off. And you have to like book it up the stairs. I mean, well, the microwave one doesn't repeat itself. It's also not quite as annoying. Okay. So I was going to show you a couple wall ones, uh, but I'm like, I don't have any walls really. So um, I'm going to do the best I can with my counter. And I'm going to do the wall sitting one with my fridge because at least I won't get my grubby little hands. I mean, you could potentially do, I could potentially show you what the wall push up looks like. You would be like this, lean in with your, bend your elbows to lean in and then, you know, but I'm going to show you on the counter. So you'd step out, get your feet about hip distance apart, and then you lean in and press back. The nice thing about doing them on something as opposed to on the floor is that you have an easier time getting up. And then you could also do the tricep ones where you bend your elbows in. Okay. And then for the wall sit one, hopefully I won't fall because I have my I have my socky slippers on with the, just the little rubber grip. Alright, so what you're going to do is you're going to lean in to your wall. And you're going to put your feet out in front of you. You want a good distance the further away from the wall. The further away you are, the easier sit's going to be. i got to scooch back over to this side. The easier your sit is going to be because you'll have that balance. And then you just hold it. Now, if you're talented, you could do leg lifts. I don't know if I can with my slippers on. I can't. I'll have to demonstrate that one later. <laughs> I'm about ready to kill myself on that one. So those are three different ones. There's more wall exercises that you can do, don't get me wrong. I just wanted to throw that out there that you don't even have to sit. If you're a standing person or you're taking a break from work, find a wall, have a sit. It's kind of like a squat. It's a wall squat, if you will, because you're dropping your butt. The only difference is it's more like a full chair as opposed to like a push back of a regular squat. So you're actually going down as opposed to back. And the reason you put your legs out is that you don't want your knees to go past that 90 degree angle going outward, you know, hyperextend anything. So the further out you can get your feet without falling off the wall, of course, the, be the more stability you'll have. Um, and then the truffle book. Um, you know, there's really they're really having a, a hard time with regulating truffle sales to make sure that they are legitimate, um, not only in weight, but in actual quality, like how it looks. Like it shouldn't be knobby. It should be kind of smooth um, with no wormholes or I can't remember the other thing. And, or, um, or too much dirt on the the hunter should actually clean some of the dirt off so and then people were mis uh, giving information about the weight 
and where they actually came from. They were saying they were coming from this very fertile uh, Italian ground where truffles just seem to fall out of the sky. I mean, obviously not because they're underground. <laughs> but the uh, they sell them in these markets. And they sell them to the traders, sell them to middlemen who sell them to rest. Uh, it's a whole big thing. And it's like changes hands so much. I can see why. And then they're poisoning the dogs, the hunting dogs, so that they don't get the truffles that other people come with. Oh my word. I'm just like, wow. Uh, what was the other thing? And they were they were poisoning them in so many different ways when they found out what, what they, the, um, Thieves were poisoning them with initially, they switched what they were doing. They switched what they were, you know, first they baited them with puddles of strychnine and then meatballs with strychnine. I'm just like, what? This is insane. This is why they're so priced so high. Crazy, crazy business. It's fascinating. It leads you to go, hmm, can I train my dog to be a truffle dog? That would be so cool. He does like digging um, at stuff on the ground. So maybe we already have the makings. Magnus the Magnificent Truffle Hunter. Okay, and then I want to talk to you about change. Because there is some change that, if you think about it, is forced upon us, whether it be by the government, by, you know, situation that wasn't your fault, but you know, you gotta roll with the punches kind of deal? Or are you the one in favor of change? Like, are you like chomping at the bit and you just don't know how to go about it? That's me. I love change. I think change is important. If we stay the same, that kind of scares me more, <laughs> frankly. Uh, I think it is how we grow. I think it is how we become better human beings than we were before. Um, so, I don't remember if I said it, but I think I said it for 35. So, to not be able to or not understand or how to process change, um, it can be scary, but like I said, the alternative Staying the same, not going anywhere, just dormant. That's what it, it reminds me of. Like, I feel like if I stopped working at something or doing something of significant value to myself, then it's time to move on. It's time to uh, morph, if you will. You know, if you follow Pokemon or whatever you like, or video games, you level up and become this next character. You're like, you're the original character, but you have all this extra, like, accoutrement. You know, you're like, not only just a turtle, but you're a turtle with a, a shell that shoots fire. I don't know. I'm pulling stuff out of my butt. I have no idea about Pokemon. That's my kid's thing. But I, I know the gist of it, I think. Um, so I want to be like Kristen 2.0.000 or whatever. Like, I keep thinking every day when I wake up, this can't be all there is. There's, going, there's got to be a greater purpose. Like, it's got to be something really important, significant in my life to make me feel settled. Like I'm all over the place I think a little bit in part because of the change factor and trying to, I'm trying to morph, you know, or molt if you will, shed off my outer skin. <laughs> that would be so awesome. Um, and just be this brighter happier, you know, just kind of, like, I, I can't begin to tell you, I feel like there is no, um, 
existence of too kind. In my head, there's no way that anybody could be too kind to someone. Unless they're just, like, hanging on them and saying, I'll do whatever you want me to do. That's not really kindness. That's just, I don't know, that's an, a version of fear in my head. Like, you're scared that if you don't do the next big thing, you know, something bad will happen. But there's, there's something greater for each and every one of us. And some of us reach it early, and I think, you know, what does that person do? How do they morph into the next level? You know, there are things about it that are scary, um, sad, uh, energizing, hopeful, Things like that. Like my oldest. Going. This is the morph. This is the morph. Going to law school. I'm so proud. I can't begin to tell you. Came out of nowhere. Like, I said, what? But yeah. I'm so proud. So, so proud. I can't even stand it. Ah! I'm so excited. So, and then, you know, my youngest is going to be graduating and morphing into something just as important, you know, being a teacher. She's like, Mom, I'm so scared. And I'm like, don't be scared. You're still going to school. You're just going to be the teacher instead of the student. Right? The schedule's the same. They still get the summer off. <laughs> Unless you teach summer school or some ath athlete thing. Can you tell I'm not an athletic mother? Um, so yeah, I constantly see people around me morphing and uh, I'm happy for them. Truly I am. But then I also get sad for myself. Like, okay, get off your ass and and start this process bigger and better and as I tell my children go big or go home okay so I'm gonna put you on pause for a little bit because we got plenty of time left I'm gonna get cleaned up take a break sit down for a minute stretch and uh, I'll be back in a little bit all right, guys, I'm glad I came in and checked because I think she's actually done. She's not wiggling. She's pretty browned on the top. And, and yeah, see, we're done. Smells like banana heaven in here. All right, so the last thing we have to do is make frosting. Frosting. That's what we're making. And we're at 43 minutes. That's because I keep putting you on pause. Okay, so we're gonna put this over here to cool. Yeah, she, the, oh, the texture is beautiful. It's nice and springy, got a little, so, oh my gosh. I'm so excited. I'm so excited, you have no idea. Okay, um, frosting, frosting, frosting. Crap, I forgot to grab all. <sighs> Don't pay any attention to me. All right, I'm back. I thought my cord reached over here one time. I swear I did the mixing over here, but it's like... Gonna, I'm going to knock a bunch of stuff over. So I'm going to stand over here. We're mixing our frosting. This is the butter and the uh, powdered sugar, which we weighed. So hopefully this works out. I don't know. It seemed like a lot to me, but... Yeah, like not enough butter for this.
guys I'm back so it didn't really get smooth I don't know what she means by that it's very powdery still so I don't know if my measurements are off but I'm gonna go ahead and do the um, coffee combo coffee milk combo um, and I did three tablespoons so I'm hoping that will counterbalance but they're supposed to be mixed together kind of making a little cold brew so I don't know if I just did it wrong or yeah what the what the deal is I'm not sure but it's definitely throwing me a little off and your cake is cooling but I do notice it's sinking in the middle so I hope I didn't jump the gun but I do like the give that I'm getting back even from the center part so that's how I'm gonna judge it Ooh, this is kind of fun Ooh. all right so here it goes this is gonna go into the sugar mixture There's no batter here. Butter, I must have put butter mixture. All right, so I'm gonna do a little bit at a time and see how it goes. Because I've been creating like this cloud storm of powdered sugar. I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not. But it's flying pretty high. This texture is, some ain't right. I have a feeling I mismeasured the This way, the powdered sugar. So, if this doesn't fix it, I'm gonna have to add more butter. being patient. I really do. But it came out. It came out super good. God, I hate myself. God, I hate when I do that. I don't hate myself. I really don't. I just find it very frustrating. I can't learn. You know? Can't learn. You'll get there, just be patient. I even tell my kids that. And do I listen to myself? Why would I do that? Come on, why would I do that? Makes no sense. You'd be crazy. Oh, this frosting is so lovely. Except I just. I don't know how that happened, but 
got a little puppy hair in there. Okay, perfect. Oh my gosh, this is so perfect. Okay, let me see if I can get. Smooth, texture's good, flavor's good. I'm gonna be on a sugar rush for the next. All right. Well, you want to Yeah, I'm mm -hmm. Well, the only, left, the only thing left to do is frost the cake, and it's not even close to being completely cool. So I'm gonna put you on pause for a minute or two. See if that helps, you know, it get to a temperature while I'm not on camera to at least frost it. But it's way too warm right now. If it doesn't, when I come back, I'll probably just let you go. Just make sure you're following me on Facebook at Kristen Haas, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-H-A-S-S. -S, on Instagram at The Best Blessed Life. And on Twitter at The Best Blessed Life, but life spelled with a number one so hang on for just a little bit longer almost done all right guys well I'm all cleaned up for the most part I have to de dust my stove or dust my stove of all the uh, powdered sugar but other than that uh, the cake is still not cool enough to frost so make sure you're following me on those social media platforms to see the cake in all its glory. Um, for the exercises, please, 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 I'm begging you, don't do them unless you ask your doctor first. Uh, for the wall squat, where you're leaning up against the wall and sitting, you, the modification would be to sit in a chair and do the leg lifts while seated, more towards the edge of the chair than sitting all the way back, unless your back is bad. Um, that would be the modification for that. For the push-ups, you can do several modifications. You can do them on the floor with your knees down. Um, can do them in a chair that I can think of <laughs> offhand, but you could potentially come up with other exercises that work your chest and your arms and your back. Um, and then I think those were the only kind of two that we did. I think that was it for modifications. Um, just checking in with you about the challenges, making sure those go into okay for you. Um, I'm finding speaking the journal is helping a lot better. And um, I'm getting some more, more time to not worry about writing it down. I have notebooks all over this house with stuff in them never stick with the same notebook every time I decide it's time to journal. Um, okay, I think that's about wraps it up, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I hope you enjoy your crock pot pot luck. Uh, the cake, I think, is going to be amazing. It's so soft. This is the first one that's ever been, like, spongy. I'm so excited. All right, I'll let you know. Check back on social media to find out how it turns out. Love you guys, and I want you to have a good day. Go do great things. Be your best self, and please live your best blessed life. Thanks for watching. <laughs>